senior officers and men of the UPDF, UPDF, religious leaders present, political leaders present, relatives and friends of the bereaved family, and all of you, our dear mourners. I'm Liz Wisho, an auntie to the late Major Karunji Naomi, today representing the family. Dear Monas, today is not an easy day for me, and indeed not easy for any of you. But I pray that the Lord in whom we trust, and the Lord that gives and takes away at an appropriate time, in his wisdom gives me the courage to talk about our dear daughter, that Major Karunji. The late Major Karunji. was born to my late brother, the late and Mrs. Kavitura, with other siblings. Kalunji grew up in a very humble, caring, responsible, reliable, and extremely dependable. A reason we never wondered why she managed to grow through the ranks today. when she goes at a senior officer rank of a major. As a family amid this grief, we still have pride in her and thank God for her life well and richly lived. However short, it has certainly been. The Bible tells us to always be on the watch that we shall never be found wanting when time comes. As a family, and thank God, our own Major Karunji, Mimi, forever being on the watch. And the testimonies we heard from both her bo bosses, workmates, colleagues, we are sure, happy and proud that she has not been found wanting. Finally, allow me on behalf of the family to wholeheartedly thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Yoel Museven, the UPDF, UPDAF leadership for loving, mentoring, and nurturing our own Karunji to the level on which she left. Thanking, assigning, and in due process making her a useful person for her country. Thank you for giving her an opportunity to make her patriotic contribution to our country, Uganda. May God bless you. Our family specifically thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Yoel Museveni, for standing with us at this critical time of grief and condoling with us at the time we needed it most. To you, our dear daughter, Karunji, You have walked a good journey. You have fought a successful battle of life. You have inspired many, and especially in the women folk. Through your courage, zeal, charisma, and integrity, you will certainly be missed always, not by us, your relatives, but by all that treasure virtue. May your soul rest in peace. We'll always love you, Mimi. Thank you. Uh, the Chief of Defense Forces, the General Officers, our Minister of Security, the Grief Family, the Honorable Members of Parliament, fellow mourners. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank God for the opportunity to pay my last tribute to my colleague, Naomi. 
I am doing it with a lot of hardship, but these are some of the issues we must overcome. Because I feel that if we do not, I don't talk about her as a female comrade, it will be like betrayal of a departed soul. Uh, I would like to I bring you greetings and I thank all of you for coming for the last celebration of Naomi. To give you this tribute, it is me, Colonel Grace Chomisha, the former Director of Human Resource and Administration of Uganda People's Defense Air Forces. I have known Naomi for the last 14 years when I took a flashback but five of, out of 14 years, five I spent it as part of the team managing the career progression of airmen and women. And Naomi was part and parcel of that airmen, of those airmen and women. So I have known her. I am part of her family, but I want to clearly say that Naomi and me interacted as officers. We interacted as officers of Uganda People's Defense Forces. In paying this tribute, fellow mourners permit me to use the words of Philip in his book, The Rumor of War. And I quote, I have read the history of my country, I've read the history of our heroes, and wanted the same, to play my own part in the patriotic game. Naomi played her own part in the patriotic calling. The desire and the need to play our own part in the patriotic game became a motivating factor for some of us, including Naomi, to, to join the Uganda People's Defense Forces, a domain that was formerly for men. I am happy that Naomi supported UPDF missions by flying logistics, by flying casualties, by undertaking rescue missions, and thereby playing her part in the patriotic game. Uh, by the time Naomi joined UPDF, this country had a lot of insurgents in most parts of the country. And immediately after her training, she qualified as a junior pilot first, and straight away started flying mission to support the bigger UPDF mission. She delivered her part in the patriotic game. Today I'm consoled by the fact that as we celebrate today, this country is relatively stable. And this kind of peace and security that is existing now may had her contribution. I cannot isolate the percentage because we work as a team, but of the team that have delivered peace and stability in this country. Karunji distinguished herself as a performer. Karunji, in my view, was not an ordinary officer. She, was a, she distinguished herself as a performer. She did it with dedication, courage, and determination, of which I loved her and respected her as a colleague. She, she, when the, the insurgents were defeated, of course, UPDF generally embarked on training. Naomi took her training seriously. She trained on her type, the Jet Ranger. She did it with courage and determination and without any excuses. She was doing that in order to improve her skills and efficiency to deliver her part in the patriotic game. She continually worked on physical training, her physical fitness. You can see she was so small. That was not fashion to her. First, she was doing it to maintain a physical body that will execute UPDF missions and tasks, thereby playing her part in the patriotic game. Allow me to observe fellow mourners that in recent years, women have gained significant ground in the world of work. They have entered fields that were formerly a domain of men. There are improved statistics. 
Karunji is, has been part and parcel of this statistic. <laughs> the statistic of women who have broken the barriers to penetrate decision-making positions, the statistic of women who have entered fields that were formerly for men and performed excellently, she has she's been part and parcel of the women who have broken the barriers. As a comrade, I would miss her. I want to thank our leaders for giving opportunity to now me and all of us for rubbing shoulders with, that, with them. We thank you for minimizing the silent gender bias and you give now more opportunity to work. Without that, she wouldn't have accomplished this. We thank you. We thank the bigger government for putting in place a sound legal and policy framework which enables us to participate just like all of you. We thank the bigger government and our boss, the command in chief, our leadership at the sector level, we appreciate you as women, as UPDF officers. UPDF has certainly lost a celebrated female officer who delivered her expected deliverables of her squadron with courage and impeccable integrity. Uh, we should all be comforted by the hope that her exemplary lifestyle will not be in vain. Of course, I hold the conviction that life will raise millions of Naomi's to fix this gap. Allow me to end by saying that Naomi, as the comrade, I will miss you, certainly. But I will let you go because the sun has set on you. Rest in peace, celebrated female pilot and officer of the Uganda People's Defense Forces. Rest in peace now. Now, the brother, at all. Then we may ask ourselves, why does the Lord, why does God allow the devil to prevail. To be honest to you, I have no capacity to answer that, to determine that. But what I know for sure is that God is the, uh, is the potter and we are the clay. He forms us, destroys us the way he likes. I also know that life is indestructible. We cannot destroy life. It only changes form. This has been transitory. As a life is transitory, like everybody of us shall definitely go. I believe she is in a better place. Finally, Naomi died in an accident. I want to encourage mourners not to buy into this social media trash. The UPDF is handling it, and they will let us know. I want to thank all of you mourners for coming in large number to empathize and commiserate with us. May God rest her soul in eternal peace. I'm a simple civilian, and in my life, not in any way, do I expect any ambushes at all. And for today, I don't know why he called me, because I'm not supposed to be standing here. But I'm a wife of a soldier, so. I'm a little annoyed, I'm sorry.
the, okay, my other family. I'm totally sorry, I'm never dramatic. Just, I have uh, allowed that ambushes just happen. <sighs> well, okay. I know Naomi as my small sister. Because of Ada and Hope and their entire family. And Grace and Saja. Colonel Moses, I'm sorry. But when this happened, and I got the news, I felt sorry for you sitting here. I'm sorry to find the chief of defense forces. I felt very sorry for you. Because internally in my heart, in my heart, I know how much I hear you sometimes. This, this young girl, celebrated female officer, Karunji, come here. I, I'm sitting like there at the back at some functions and I hear you mention her name. And I could feel how much you, how much love, or how much respect, or how much, I don't know, you put to her. So you are the first person that came to mind. And I said, eh, Karunji Afa, I'm gonna sit here for you. I didn't know how you felt, but that is me, how I felt. Number two. <sighs> Number two was my family, the Ababa and Ababa Ada. Our bigger family, our bigger family that have stood with them in small time, in big time, in good times and in bad times. So our, our Kwemanya, you please stand up. Adam Shua and, and Hope and all your other friends have seen us around this video, Yakarunji, and do not know who we are. But we are this family that lives every day of our life with this family. So please stand up. Why are you sitting down, Janet, and all of you girls? I was the older one at the university where we met. And we have lived each day together. So it's a tough Peru. And when we, we had this news, we said that we were going to Naomi's house. But we felt like we've been losing people, but it was far. So we said, eh, now death has come close. It has taken one of us. It is the, like the cycle, the circle has been robbed of one of us. But God immediately reminded me that Naomi lived for two things which have been said. Lived for God and lived for the service of her country and for the service of the UPDF. So, if she's not in the service of the UPDF flying planes, flying helicopters, serving her country to the best of her knowledge of what we knew, then she's serving, she's at the right place where she wanted to be. Every time, every minute, every season, day and night, that's where she is. So immediately I saw that. I am sorry to look bad this minute. I was very firm through because I knew if she's not here, she's there because she didn't have gray areas in between. She was either for God or for the UPDF. And I thank you, Naomi. No, Chimanya. Every time, Nambogana, 
My sister, they should say, I'm humbled. I'm humbled. Who am I? Who am I to be celebrated? We are humbled by your humility. We are humbled by your courage. We are humbled by who you have been to your family, the bigger family. UPDF, uh, since I'm speaking here last, before you guys speak, I want to thank you for loving our sister. I want to thank you so, so, so much. Air Force, you are exceptional. Just a, a bit of which, which we've been in the video. We found out that you are more closer to Naomi than we are. So thank you so much for that unit. Thank you so, so, so much. Because you spent, I think, 99% of the time with her, which we didn't. So we salute you. We love you. We will always love you anyways. We have no choice but to love you. But today, I wanted to tell you that you are a special lot. We did, maybe people who didn't know, who don't work in the military like me, who don't live this life. You are a special lot. To the rest of Uganda, we have an army. We have a family, my Jesus. We have a family. You are family. You are so true. You are so true. And to the young man who died that we is going to be buried with, with Naomi, we salute him. Thank you so much. God bless Uganda and God bless you all. Thank you. A pastor and a man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome. I was with Naomi on Saturday. We had a program in church. And I came in towards the end of the program to share some few words with them. And I saw her full of life, full of glory. And as I was leaving, I said hi to her. And then on Sunday also, I saw her in church. Not knowing that that was the last time I was going to see her. When I was told about the accident, we were first informed that the plane was missing. And so I called all the pastors in church, from wherever they were, and I asked them to start praying. And while we were praying, I got another call that she had passed on. And so I called the regional pastor to inform him of what had happened. And then he told me that he was going to inform Pastor Chris that evening about what had happened. That lets you know how important Sister Naomi was to us. About four, three or four years ago, if I can remember, she had done so well in the ministry that we decided to ordain her a pastor. Because sometimes when I'm not around, if I travel out of the country, she handles the service. So passionate for God. I have never seen a woman so passionate, so disciplined, like Sister Naomi. And so when we submitted her name, to be ordained as a pastor. She went through the training and was amongst the best students in that class. And when it was time for the ordination, that was when the army sent her on a special course in the United States of America. And so she told me that she may not be able to attend the ordination ceremony. And so I said, okay, fine, we'll do it again. And this year, actually on Monday, was when we began to compile the names for new sets of pastors to be ordained. 
And the first name that came to my mind was Naomi. As we stay here today to celebrate our life, one thing should come to our mind. Paul said something. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Naomi fought a good fight. And she kept the faith. A crown of glory is laid up for her. Someone said that is the act of the devil. I don't think so. Naomi was someone that was full of the spirit that the devil cannot even come near. But I think it was time. She has finished what she came here to do. Yes, at a very young age. But she had finished what God has sent her to do here. Many in the church can testify how that Naomi affected their lives. Many can testify how that she led them to Christ. Someone talked, I think it was an elder sister that talked about a car that she gave. She actually used that car to pay for 5,000 copies of Rhapsody of Realities to be distributed free. That lets you know how special this lady is to God. Many a times, because of the fact that we miss her, we may ask the question, oh God, why? Why did this happen? Why was she not saved? But that question is left for us when we meet the Lord in heaven. Because that's where she is. And like somebody rightly said, if you tell her to come back now, she will say, no way. I'm not coming back. Why? Because where she is, there is no more sorrow. No more pain. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so, this afternoon, I ask you a question. Naomi came. She lived. She affected lives. She was not a speck in the dust. She touched the lives of men and women that came into our world. She gave their lives a meaning. The question I ask this afternoon is, when you stand before the Lord, what would you say to him? If the Lord Jesus will tarry, whether we like it or not, that day will come for every one of us. When we will stand before the Lord and give an answer of what we did with our lives here on earth. Make no mistakes about it. Heaven is real and hell is real. We're all here gathered testifying about what this young lady did. The people that she touched their lives. Question, would we say the same thing about you? I'll leave all of us here with that question. When that day comes, what would you say that you did for the Lord? Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Senior Pastor. Fairest reverence. I'm going to read two, just two messages. Then we shall have the American Embassy have make their remarks thereafter. Commander Air Force for his representatives and the Chief of Defense Forces, and we end uh, the session of eulogies before we hand it over to the church to proceed. Let me. Today is a sad day. Today I stand in front of you with a deep hole in my heart. And this hole in my heart is not just in my heart, it's in all of our hearts today. But one of the joys that we have of knowing is that many of us started our lives with holes in our hearts. And Major Naomi filled those holes and made us strong. Made us strong not only with our families and with our friends, but also made us strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. She was amazing. I got a short time to get to know her when I was the military escort officer in Kenya. 
She did such great things, top of her class, for learning, for bringing different countries together, for knowing how to unite friends and family and colleagues. I don't want to say anything more than what the families and friends have said today. For everything they have said, I can echo and concur. She was amazing. The nickname we gave her at the end of the class was Wonder Woman because she had so much strength, energy, intelligence, demeanor, and yet helpful and selfless. She was dedicated to serve Uganda, no matter what facet that would be. And at the same time, she knew every place and every time where to share the gospel of Jesus Christ at the same time. Wonderful conversations with her about her testimony of the Savior, Jesus Christ. We're happy with this opportunity to be able to share just a little bit of what she provided. Her training in the United States, again, top of her class, amazingly dedicated. But what's also amazing, too, is that not only was she an amazing soldier, an amazing military officer, an amazing pilot, she was also an amazing friend, daughter, sister, mother, and most importantly, an amazing daughter of God, strong and perfect example of the Christian faith. Major Naomi will never be forgotten, but we can provide our condolences with everyone at this time. And may we always remember her selfless sacrifice that we all might be safe. Fellow mourners, uh, the UPDF fraternity, all protocol observed. My name is Jacqueline Akello. Uh, I work at the American Embassy in the Department of Defense. And I handle training programs for the UPDF. I've basically met most of the senior officers and the junior officers alike. And I can say that I thank God that it was never my dream to interact with the military, but that is where God led me to. I met Major Naomi in 2016 as I was processing her out to go for the squadron officer school in Alabama. Indeed, as most of you spoke about her touching smile, her humility and intelligence, and her fragility. I did see those qualities in her. With her smile, she was very humble. As she spoke, she spoke softly. You can never forget that. Actually, I joked with my colleague Isaac. I said, Major Naomi is supposed to come and pick her medical forms. Why is she not coming? Is she OK? And then uh, what shocked me is when the medical results came. I was so impressed. And we sent her to training. She was one of the best, as my boss mentioned. She came back. Sadly, this week, on Tuesday, she was preparing to go back for another flight training in Michigan. Her visa already issued. She was supposed to leave on the 22nd of next month with another Captain Conrad, who has been to the States for training as well. So I just got back from leave and I asked Isaac, did you call these pilots to come for their uh, normal checks? Because pilots need to be in good shape before they can fly. And I tell Isaac, call Captain Conrad. I call Major Fred Wanders. I say, please inform your pilots to come for the checks. The next thing, a few hours after that, I had a passport right in front of me. Isaac was telling me she's been promoted because when we sent her back in the US, she was a lieutenant. Isaac was telling me she's been made up to the, ma to the major rank. I said, I'm very proud of her. She's intelligent. The next few minutes I hear is that she's crushed. Since Tuesday up to now, fellow mourners, I haven't been myself. I got derailed on my work. I got confused. But I want to say one thing as everybody has spoken. I have stood at such podiums to speak on behalf of my own relatives who passed on, including my parents. To their family, it's not a very easy time. And I know how you feel. The hole is deep. But I tell you, as they say, time heals all wounds. Only him that now me stood steadfast in faith and served will seal that wound. 
So I pray that may Christ give you the strength. None of us, not even if they'll tell you be strong as somebody said, you will not comprehend. A friend told me one time she didn't know what it meant to lose a, a, a loved one until they lost one. So I beseech thee and ask that the good Lord strengthens you. We are all in this together and it is a journey that we are walking. As the pastor said, let us prepare ourselves. To my dear sister, a gallant UPDF female officer, Major Naomi Karunji, for the short time that I knew you, may the good Lord receive your soul. May you forever trade your sorrows, your joys, in peace with the Lord in heaven. May your soul rest in peace. Amen.